Hi everybody, it's Annie with Thrift Flux and Stuff, and there is a tag going around. It is the uh, Handbag Deal Breakers tag, so I thought I'd play along. I watch a lot of YouTube, so I've enjoyed a lot of the videos posted so far, and I thought for kicks it would be fun to um, tag somebody. It would be my very first tag. So I am going to tag Winnie B L V. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she's an absolute pleasure to watch. I love watching her videos. So I will tag her below, and I'll also include links to all of the videos I've watched so far um, for this particular tag, if you're into that kind of thing. So to get started, uh, my first deal breaker for a bag is one that does not include either a detachable strap or an adjustable strap. That is huge for me only because I personally like to switch out my straps a lot. I find that um, you can kind of switch up a bag and make it feel new again, kind of like adding a new charm or something, just by changing out a strap that either has a pattern on it or is a chain, you know, any little thing like that. I'm really into that. Um, the next thing for me is if it's heavy. Oh my God, I can't tell you how many times I'll be thrifting and my shoulder will just start to get tired because the bag is too heavy. So um, I am a little bit of a hypocrite with that because I love uh, the No Way bag and I have one here that um, I have like, I think a few, well, actually let me think. Do I have three, four of the um, LV No Way bags and the Epi leather? And I just love them because they're so durable and I don't have to worry about it and I can just like wipe it off if it gets dirty. like. I have been at events where like beer has like actually fallen on my bag and I didn't freak out because I could just like wash it off and it's totally fine. Um, so with all of the goodness, it sort of outweighs the weight. But with that said, um, you know, if I was in the market for a new bag, I definitely would make sure it's not too heavy. And so with these guys, I purposely don't put a lot in here except for maybe a water bottle that would make it be weighed down a little bit more but other than that um you know that's maybe my biggest point of hypocrisy because <laughs> I love my no ways and um they can get heavy now mind you the newer ones I don't think are as heavy um I have only vintage ones like this is from the 90s in fact I think all of my epi no ways are actually from the 90s and you know they're sturdy bags like if you are in the market for one these guys are solid um, I'll do a review but if you're kind of curious just really quickly I'll show you um, you know the corners on this are pretty nice not too too worn because that's sometimes where you see a lot of wear on these and then like in the um, in the handle it's not cracked at all and sometimes you know you'll see a lot of cracking there as well now I haven't cleaned the brass on this so um, you do see a little bit of green I don't know if I can show, yeah, here's one. So there's a little bit of green in the raw bit. I don't know if you can see that or not. But anyway, so um, I'll do a separate review on the ways later. Uh, the next one is no closure. So that is huge for me. <laughs> I am a complete just like, I don't know, klutz. Um, accident waiting to happen. So if I'm shopping and I need to like bend down to the lower shelf or what have you, I always feel like bags will start to tip at an angle and then my things fall out. And so one example of that is I have this um, vintage uh, bucket bag here and this is from there. Oh, I should have looked this up before talking to you all. I'm sorry, but there was um, this company. What was it? The, um, oh, is their name on here? The French, the French company. And they partnered with Louis Vuitton and I believe this was like in the 70s. I don't know if the light is kind of getting in the way there. Can you just see that? Um, and anyway, so, cause there, there was so much demand and low supply. So they, they coupled with the French company and they produced all these really cool bags. And you know, they have a different look and feel to them. This one is, I think from the 60s. And I was drawn to it cause there was this photo in one of my Louis Vuitton books of a gal who's fashioning it. And I just immediately was like, oh, I've got to have that bag. Now it doesn't have a closure on it. So that um, kind of discouraged me from wearing it. And I didn't have an opportunity to see one in person before I bought this. Um, and then, you know, another, I think, downfall with this particular guy that I didn't know at the time was for the straps, it really is like a handheld bag. 
which is fine except it's so long. So for another deal breaker, handheld is great if the size is appropriate, at least fitting for me. Um, this is way too long for me for, you know, being a, a shoulder or I mean a, um, was a handheld bag that you put in the crook of your arm. Now you could, you could wear it over your shoulder, but the problem with that is you can kind of see is I'm on my tippy toes here is, you know, this comes out and this is like, this is structured. This isn't going in. So that personally to me is kind of, kind of annoying. So that is my other deal breaker. Um, let me cheat here. I have a computer in front of me, so I need to see what, what I wrote down. Okay. And so the next one, oh yeah. Okay. So this is another one hard to get into. Oh, how many times have you guys ever had a heart attack because you can't find your keys or you think you lost your keys and you didn't lose them. They're just in your bag and you can't find your bag because you don't know which side of the bag it was in. <laughs> so this is the Louis Vuitton Samur, Samur 30. I don't know. I think I'm totally like uh, botching that name. But anyway, so this is one hard to get into um, just because, you know, it's a little bit of effort. You have to unbuckle it every single time and then open it up and then, you know, then you're good to go. Um, so what I end up doing is I'll just leave, you know, one side open and the other side closed. But even with that, you know, it's just if your wallet or your important stuff is on the open side, you know, there's still that chance with me being a klutz that something's going to fall out. Um, so that's definitely a deal breaker for me is that, you know, you want easy access. You want to be able to easily unbutton it or just open it up quickly for when you need to pull something out. And, um, you know, the other factor is being able to know which side you put it on or in. Um, but this particular guy, I have been so tempted to just like get a little patch or something so that I can always remember where I put something. Um, I don't know if anybody else relates to that dilemma, but this is an awesome bag. Um, and I'll do a review of my bags one day. Um, so I can get into more detail about them because I have some vintage ones that maybe not everybody has. So it's always fun to talk to talk about the less common ones out there. Um, and then the next one is, okay, so <laughs> this is kind of funny. I haven't experienced this necessarily with a designer bag, but fur bags, um, faux fur bags, you know, are sort of cool. And I think they were like really on trend for a while. Anyway, um, I had one that was from Chico's. And I really liked it because it had this like Chanel-esque look to it. It had the chain strap. And if I can find a picture of it, I'll insert one. Um, but I swear to God, the fur, it would just like, it would get calyx. Like it would get staticky. And I had to, it was <laughs> kind of gave me flashbacks to having a My Little Pony. Um, I had to get out a comb and like kind of comb it down, right? And I thought, no, no. Like I love my purses, but I don't want to be having to comb their hair. <laughs> so. Oh, anyway, that is um, my other deal breaker is if I have to comb or groom my purse, I don't think so. Um, and then lastly, and this is, you know, a basically like the mission for this whole entire channel is to talk and advocate um, sustainable fashion. So price, price is absolutely a deal breaker for me. Um, I have bought a few things and they were little things brand new from Louis Vuitton. Absolutely. But ultimately when it comes to like my handbags, I do purchase pre-loved. One, it's just certainly more affordable. Two, it's better on the environment. You can give these bags more life. Um, and then three, oh, I had a third point. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? It'll come back to me. Now I'm, now I'm losing it. Um, well, okay, forget the third point. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, they're affordable and you're giving them a second life. And I think that's, you know, really important. Oh, I remember now, sorry. Uh, quality, like I, got into bags a little late into the game. But with that said, I can tell you, I can completely notice a difference in how thick the canvas is. Or like with the No Way, if you look at like the strap of the ones from the 1980s, they just are so much thicker than the ones that you go to um, and look at at the store today. I don't know if, um, if anybody's ever taken their vintage ones and done an actual comparison when they're in the store, but since vintage is all I have, um, I have done that comparison, and so anyway, uh, you know, for me, that's another motive for why I like to buy the older things, because they just seem more durable, um, but, you know, things happen. I have some older ones that 
you know, I've had like zippers fall off and things like that too. So it, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, um, that's my tag. And again, or sorry, that's my deal breakers. And again, I wanted to tag Winnie B L V. So, um, hopefully she'll play along and get this <laughs> my first tag. So I hope I do it right. Anyway, thank you guys. And I will talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.